G'day, Lockie here. So last week we took a look at actually installing Istio and for those of you who uh, didn't see that video, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but what I felt compelled to do after this was show you a little bit more on how to use Istio. So Istio, as mentioned, is a, a service mesh, ingress, egress routing, fault injection. Um, you can do a whole bunch of things with this platform and uh, I wanted to kind of do it justice. So what I'm going to do is just spend a couple of minutes on each section and do little snippets of videos and show you how um, Istio makes your services tap and how things uh, work in Istio. So really I'm just going to be stepping through some examples here. Fairly lightweight and I want to keep them short and simple. So today I'm just going to show you how services get integrated into the service mesh. So you have these applications you want to deploy and you want to put them into Istio. And we're going to just take a, a quick demo of how that's done. So you can follow along with me here, um, but I'll kind of be ad-libbing based on this. So first of all, I'm just going to pop over here and show you two services and, and two applications that I want to deploy onto Kubernetes uh, where Istio is already running. So I have a service de definition here. Uh, one important thing that you must do when defining services if you want to enable layer 7 routing is actually give them a name. And the name can be prefixed with either currently today HTTP dash something or just HTTP on its own or for example HTTP status here or grpc or grpc as a prefix. Now what this does is tell the Envoy router to actually use layer 7 routing, so a little bit smarter routing, actually deeper inspection there. If you don't give it a name, it's going to fall back to layer 4. So where possible, if you're using HTTP or grpc, you want to actually use the name and it's keyed off the name, so that's something there. And then behind them, we just have a simple echo server here, service 1 deployment and uh, service 2 looks very similar here. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy them. So over here I actually have my working window at the top and just I want to give you a, an idea of what's actually getting laid down onto Kubernetes here at the bottom. Um, so if you've actually used um, Istio CTL, so we create these services in Istio by using Istio CTL. Um, so let's have a look. Um, apply for example okay so I have that apps.yaml and here what I'm doing is a cube cuddle apply nothing new there um, and I'm going to give it the file name but I'm actually calling Istio CTL cube inject and we'll go ad, uh, about what that does at the moment but there was no sign in this apps.yaml of any metadata for Istio so um, all I'm doing is going to apply them and we should see service uh, service 1 and deployment service 1, service service 2 and deployment service 2 have been created here. Now the interesting thing you can see down here is that we have pod initializing and 0 of 2 and if you remember back we only actually had a single container in each, um, each pod so something has happened here and the magic is in that cube inject. So let's dig into that at the end. I'll continue through the demo. So we have service 1 and service 2. So I have a little script here. Um, what I'm going to do is actually grab the client and the server here just from the, the names of the pods and set them um, to some variables in my shell. Okay, so I'm going to paste that in so I have client and server and all this is doing is a label selector and grabbing the name, so no magic there. Now this command here, what I'm going to do is a kubectl exec in the client pod in the app container and I'm going to run a curl to service 2 on port 80 and I'm going to grep the request ID. Okay, so you can see this request ID um, has actually come back as part of the curl. Um, so what we're about to prove here is if I want to trace this request ID, I'm going to go and take a look at the logs on the client side and I'm going to look at the proxy. Now this is another piece that happened in the cube inject piece, but we've actually injected a uh, an envoy um, proxy sidecar that's sitting there intercepting all this traffic. So what I'm going to do here is ask it for the logs and this is going to show me the logs of that proxy. And you can see here that I've asked for a get, I got a 200 back and here's the request ID, it's going to service 2 at this um, pod IP at this port. Okay so we've traced it client side, let's go and grab the server side it's a server run the same command so you can see again the only difference here is um, 
here we go. So grab this service two and it's going to port 8080 here. So um, fantastic. So all we've really validated here is that you've gone through the service mesh and the service mesh goes um, from service one and service two. And hello, how are you doing? Service one to service two, and we've gone through those uh, sidecars to actually get that data through. So Envoy has intercepted all the traffic on the um, egress and passed it back through on the ingress on the server side. Um, so all we've illustrated there is that we've defined two services and pushed some traffic between them and we're able to actually track that request through the service mesh. Um, now finally, this command is just uh, something to note. So server side, I'm running a curl at localhost, and you can see that localhost does not go through Envoy. So that's something to take into account. So if you're doing a lookup locally against localhost specifically, it does not go through Envoy. So I don't see that re request ID come back in the headers there. Okay. Um, at this point, I want to quickly go and have a look at the deployment of service one. So I mentioned earlier when we actually did the install, we ran it via um, Istio CTL cube inject. Now what that did was inject two things. So it actually injected an init container, and this init container needs um, capabilities net admin. So what this does is actually interface on the host and configure the IP tables on the, the Kubernetes node to actually make intercept all the traffic out of this pod and push it into Envoy. Um, and the same on the ingress. So ingress, egress, we're just making sure that anything originating from that pod goes out via um, the Envoy sidecar proxy. And on the proxy side, you can also see that we've injected this um, Istio proxy debug. So we're running um, a proxy as a sidecar. We have an init container that takes care of the IP tables rules. And as a UX-wise for, for me, the app developer, I'm using Kubeinject. Now, there is plans in the documentation to use an admission controller in Kubernetes, which you would just submit those raw resources without doing a Kubeinject, and on the server side, it would actually render the um, sidecar and the uh, init container into the manifest. So just to wrap up, what we've done today is we've gone through, we've submitted two applications and their corresponding services into Kubernetes. Um, we've then gone and s done a request client to server um, and tracked that request in the log files through, um, uh, through Envoy. And we've actually taken the request ID to track that end to end. And then we've done it for localhost as well. So you can see that um, user experience here, I don't have to know anything about the service mesh, I'm just deploying raw deployments and services on Kubernetes, and then they go get routed uh, intelligently through the service mesh. So that kind of rounds out uh, the first video. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, and if you want to know more, the documentation's great. You can follow along exactly with what, what I've done today. Thanks for joining. Cheers.